Ehi compare, ci può suonare, chi si sa... So welcome to our episode on tapping. Uh, tapping is a form of ancient Chinese medicine that's been around for about 2,500 years. Um, what we're going to learn today is how to use our fingers to tap on acupressure or acupuncture points and help us to calm our bodies, uh, manage our feelings, regulate ourselves when we feel anxious, nervous, or angry, and ultimately uh, improve our behavior. Um, when we do the tapping, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, what, you find, what we use is a mantra to go along with it, and typically that's, uh, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how we have used it clinically, and then we'll go on to a demonstration, and in a separate video we'll do some research, and the highlights of my favorite research. Um, so let me tell you a couple stories, because uh, you can use the tapping in, in multiple, multiple ways. And the first way is the sort of more traditional way. So somebody came to see me in therapy and was uh, really her notion of therapy was to tell me about all of the bad things that have, that have happened to her. And there certainly have been very many. Um, so what she talk, told me about was, uh, first of all, she was a gal in a, in a wheelchair, multiply handicapped, um, and needed help and assistance to get around, to bathe, to do anything like that. And uh, while she was younger, she was actually not behaving very well or something. And they put her in a, a tub full of really hot water, burned her, and sent her to the hospital. And so she was telling me about this event, and she was crying, as you can imagine, and breaking down. And I said, OK, let's take a minute and see if we can calm our bodies down to be able to get our frontal lobes back online and think about this stuff and talk about it some more. So um, I decided to tap on her. I had already explained uh, what the procedure was. And I started to tap, and by the time, so we, we usually start on the hands and then work our way down from the top across the face to the chest. Uh, by the time I got to her chin, um, she had gone from hysterical crying to uh, being alcohol. She was asleep. And I got through um, her chest and her chin, and she was holding my hand. And I just, I just found that it was so peaceful in that moment. I decided to just let her rest and, and be calm. And uh, probably five or six minutes, we just sat there, her holding my hand. Then when she came to, her mood was better. She was more regulated. She was under control. And we can continue our conversation about things that she wanted to talk about. So that's one example. And it's probably the more typical example. Uh, another example is more in the crisis mode. So when people are dysregulated already, um, and maybe in some situation in real life, you can step right in and rather than try to talk them through that situation, um, you can calm their bodies down, which will give the message to their brain that everything's okay and it'll help improve their behavior. So um, this is another gal, um, and I come out of my office and go out onto the back porch, and she's a very engaging kid. She's always high and hugs and all that sort of stuff. And she's sitting on a bench with her head down, and her body's just sort of folded up. And I know things are not well. And so I say to her, are you OK? And I get no response. And when I get no response, I know something's up. So I sit next to her, and I say, you OK? And she says, uh, no, I think I'm having a heart attack. So I said, well, you know, maybe you are. I don't know. But it also could be panic, which is what I suspected, of course. And I said, you know, we could tap and see if that helps. And if it doesn't help, uh, you know, we can get you to the doctor. And she said, OK. So I said, I typically ask on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how do you feel right now? And she said, in 9 or 10 being really anxious or really upset, 1 being really calm, she said she was a 9 or a 10. Uh, we've probably been, at that point, tapping together at least five years. Um, so she, this is something that her body knows will make her feel better. Um, so we go through a routine of tapping, um, and at the end of our routine, I say, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being really anxious and nervous, 1 being really calm, where are you now? And she said a 1 or a 2. And that was just one round of tapping, so just a couple of minutes. And uh, then she was able, I said, so wh wh what can we do now? What would you like to do now? And she said, well, I'll just go on with my day. 
so she left with a staff person to do the things that she was had intended to do. All right, so those are a couple of good examples. One, of course, is just uh, traditional in the sense that you use it during therapy to help people feel better. I'm not suggesting that you guys do that, but you can use it to make people feel calm whenever you like. And the other is that crisis situation where we're more inclined to talk to people, but uh, I think we're better off sometimes just going to their body than trying to talk them through that kind of situation. So let me give you a demonstration. Uh, we start off on the hand, and again, we're going to use the same mantra that we typically use. Uh, and I want to just remind you that uh, we're, as we give messages to the body that work their way up to the brain that tell you that you're safe, uh, one of the ways to do that is to be very calm yourself and to talk slowly and have good prosody of voice, good intonation. So uh, as we do that, keep those things in mind. And we're going to start on the karate chop here and say, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. Then we flip to this joint here and say, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. So about three times we'll repeat the mantra on each spot. Uh, right at the top of the head, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. The hairline, doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. That's the point where it starts to get to me. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. Between the eyes, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. Side of the eye, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. Under the eye, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. Above the lip, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. The chin, I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. And the final point is on the collarbone here, uh, and just as a caveat, you never really touch people on their body without asking. So I always ask, even if I've done it many times with the same person, about this spot. And mostly people say, okay, but sometimes it, it, they don't want me to touch them there. Uh, so I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. I'm doing the best I can, and everybody knows it. And that's the technique. So remember that the power is at your fingertips. So tap on. So I, I also wanted to review some of my uh, favorite research on tapping and some of the research that made me interested in it. And so the first study that I, I uh, found was on um, EMTs and uh, ambulances. So EMTs work in ambulances. They pick people up on the street. They take them to the hospital. People have been hurt. Um, those people are often anxious, in pain, uh, and their bodies are dysregulated and hurt. You know, unfortunately, EMTs are not physicians, so they can't really dispense medication. So they're looking for some way to make people feel better. Um, and so in this study, what they did was apply uh, acu or apply pressure to an acupuncture acupressure point. Um, to see if they could have some effect on how people felt. And what they found was pretty, pretty extraordinary. So just by applying pressure to this point on uh, someone's hand who was hurt, they got a, nearly a 70% reduction in anxiety, uh, nearly a 50% reduction in pain, and probably one of the more interesting points is they got a 14-point reduction in blood pressure. So people, people's bodies got calmer just by doing this. And a 14-point drop in blood pressure in a couple of minutes 
it's hard to achieve with any kind of medication. And again, when your heart slows down, it tells your brain things are okay and your anxiety drops and your feelings of pain go up. So I thought that was one of the, it was a really interesting study to start off with. Uh, my second and maybe most, my favorite study is uh, on the Rwandan genocide. N not a particularly happy topic, but um, there were a number of uh, uh, refugee, ki uh, refugee kids who, uh, whose parents were killed um, in this Rwandan genocide. And many of these kids saw their parents killed in front of them and saw other people slaughtered. And, and they end up in this uh, school uh, for difficult kids or kids who've been t traumatized. And um, a group of researchers comes in to do some tapping with them. And the idea is that they're going to spend a couple of weeks with these kids um, doing some clinical work, including doing, uh, doing tapping. Well, they get around the tapping in on these 50 kids, and these all 50 kids have post-traumatic stress disorder, and uh, they're the most severe kids in the institution. And uh, after one round of tapping, um, there's some emergency, and all the researchers have to leave. So they're unable to do the follow-up clinical work that they had, had hoped to do over the course of a couple of weeks. Uh, before they left, they decided to test the kids again to see how their PTSD was post the treatment. And what they found is that 92% of the kids no longer had PTSD. They no, no longer met the symptom profile for PTSD, which is pretty extraordinary. Uh, very difficult uh, disorder to treat and very painful. Um, so they didn't expect those uh, results to hold for very long. Uh, but part of the original study was to do this treatment then come back in a year and see if the measurable results were maintained. And so they came back at the end of the year and they measured the kids. And what they found is over 90% of the kids still no longer met the criteria for PTSD, which is really extraordinary to think about. Uh, and you can't really attribute uh, that change to one or a few treatments of tapping. And so they did a little bit more uh, investigation. And what they found was that the headmaster of the school was so impressed by the results with the kids that they institutionalized it, that they used this as part of their ongoing program. So a kid becomes dysregulated or upset, other kids tap on him, tap on themselves, the teachers tap on each other, and, and you know, and it's just beautiful. And so these are, these are incredibly remarkable results uh, after just a little bit of treatment. You know, I think the lesson for us, of course, is that if we want to use these treatments effectively, if we want to use tapping effectively, we need to institutionalize it. It needs to be part of what we do on a regular basis. Um, you know, there's multiple other studies, um, again, in, in the area of trauma, PTSD. There's uh, some memory studies where kids do some tapping and post the tapping. Uh, these intrusive memories, which torture them, uh, are gone. Or, or minimized at least. Um, there's stuff on depression. Um, there's stuff on uh, anxiety. Um, one of my other favorite studies is by uh, Dawson Church. And uh, I'm sort of stuck on the biochemistry of stuff. And what he found is about a 25% reduction in cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Um, so that's a fairly phenomenal result. People are upset, traumatized, they have PTSD. Uh, it's driven by their uh, internal state, by their hormones, and you can actually adjust people's hormones using some of these, these techniques. And, uh, you know, the last one I want to talk about is one of the great treatments that's been developed for, uh, for trauma is EMDR, eye motion desensitization and reprocessing. And it involves, in some forms, you know, following people's fingers and sort of getting this cross-lateral cross stimulation of your brain. Um, it's a very, very good technique, particularly for uh, one-time trauma. And so it's the go-to treatment these days. So there's a heads-up study where they do uh, tapping versus EMDR. And what they find is that tapping performs every bit as well as EMDR. So those are a couple of my favorites. Uh, what you'll find is an annotated bibliography on the website for those of you who are interested in uh, all of the research we could find. And it's fairly substantial. So uh, tap on.